Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to talk about five amazing tips that will immensely improve your workflow in Pro Tools. So if you're new to Pro Tools, some of these tips are gonna blow your mind. Actually, if you're experienced with Pro Tools, some of these tips are gonna blow your mind. So I'm just gonna jump into it. My first tip is if you have to do a thing to multiple tracks, like let's say you have to send them to an auxiliary or let's say you wanna add an effect on multiple inserts, hold down Command and Shift when you perform your function. Okay, I'm just gonna jump in. I messed up, it is not Command Shift, it's Option Shift. I meant to say option shift. Um, yeah, it's four in the morning when I shoot these things, so I just messed it up, but it's option shift. Back to the video. If you're running Windows, it's control shift. I see a lot of engineers still routing manually, so this will just save you a lot of time. You could do this a couple ways. For example, let's say you wanna create like a subgroup for your drums. You could do a couple things. You could create an auxiliary track and then select a bus that you're not using on your auxiliary track. We can call this drum master. And then select your drum tracks, hold command shift, and then in the output, go to the bus and then find your drum master bus that you just created and voila, everything will route directly to that. Or in this case, instead of creating the auxiliary track first, what you can do is select the tracks that you want, hold down command and shift, go to your output, and instead of selecting a bus that you wanna to run to, go to new track. Select your auxiliary track, give it a name, and boom, everything will be automatically routed to that track. That is a really good way to route to your auxiliary track really fast. Tip number two is also a shift command feature, but instead of using it to route a bunch of tracks, we're gonna use it on our playlist. So if you're not sure what a playlist is in Pro Tools, this is a way that we can manage multiple takes and then from that you can make a comp. But sometimes, let's say you already finished your comping, you close it up, you're back in your waveform view. Let's say you come across something you don't like. Well, traditionally what you would do is open your playlist, find a different take, pop it up, add your crossfades, Bob's your uncle, there you go. Or what you can do is highlight the section you want to replace, hold command shift, and then with the arrow, you can shift through your takes without having to open your playlist. This is something I just recently learned and it's amazing. Tip number three is a really cool feature. It's copying audio to MIDI. This was introduced a couple versions back, but it's actually very useful and you can do some really cool stuff with it. There's a couple ways to do this. The first way is take the audio track that you want to convert, right click it, and then there's a function called copy audio to MIDI. Click on that and then you can paste, just right click in a MIDI track and voila. It'll take your audio and map it out in a MIDI track, which is super useful. Now it's gonna ask you what kind of algorithm do you wanna use? You can use like polyphonic, you can use a rhythm. Um, it's up to you depending on what you're copying over. But there's an even simpler way. Take your audio, hold option and drag it down to whatever MIDI or instrument track you wanna do and it'll do the exact same thing. So this is even faster. I've used this feature a couple times already. Um, I did a guitar solo and then I mapped it out to MIDI and just ran a synth over it so you had a really awesome synth underneath the guitar solo. I'm a guitar player, I'll write a part and then I'll copy it over to MIDI and then I can run it through an organ or a keyboard or a synthesizer of some kind just to see what kind of cool stuff I can come up with. It isn't perfect, but it gives you a really solid starting place to start messing around. So anyways, check it out. It's probably my favorite tip on the list. So my fourth tip is use Control Command to select multiple outputs. Yeah, I did it again. So it's not Control Command, it's Control Shift. That's what it is. Hold down Control Shift and that'll give you multiple outputs. Really cool tip. I see a lot of people that let's say they have to route to a parallel compressor, we'll use a send, which is totally fine. I do that all the time. But if you wanna free up some of your sends for other things, what you can do is go to the output section on your track, hold control command down, and then select the bus route to your parallel compressor, and you'll see a check mark will appear. If you've done this right, you will notice a plus sign on your output, which just means there's multiple outputs selected. So now you can have something go to your speakers as well as to a parallel compressor. This also works amazing for side chaining if this is something you wanted to do as well. And my fifth tip is if you need to move something out of grid mode, let's say you wanna temporarily move a region in slip mode, hold down command and just drag it where you need it to go. That's it. Holding command down will temporarily disable grid mode and just let you work in slip mode, which can be really nice if you just need to nudge something over. So if you're finding this video useful and you are getting into home recording and Pro Tools, I would recommend liking and subscribing to my channel. I'm trying to grow this channel and I would love to be part of your community. So like, subscribe, and thank you very much. Anyways, those are some five tips that'll help you increase your workflow. I think they're amazing. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's other tips I should cover because there's so many really cool features in Pro Tools that even though I've been using it for so long, I'm still discovering a lot of really cool things. Anyways, thank you very much. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.